Pokemon Red with no new moves was unique, so let's do another requested one. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Yellow with a team of only one Pikachu? Pikachu's base stats are really weak, clocking in as the 28th lowest base stats of all 151 Pokemon in the game. In Pokemon Yellow, it's a little bit better than in Red and Blue, as you can see from it learning some different moves by level up. Mostly just learning moves that are better and more of them. I've never done a Pokemon Yellow challenge though, so this could be interesting. I don't know how I'm gonna beat Brock. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if you think I can win or not. I'm sure that I can win with enough time, but places like Brock's Gym, Rock Tunnel, and the final battle are gonna be brutal. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use one Pikachu. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs and items outside of combat are allowed. Let's do this. The opening goes exactly as usual. We get our starter, which is always going to be a Pikachu in yellow version, and we beat our first rival fight. This is actually important because our rival has an Eevee, and what it evolves into depends on how your first two fights with him go. If you lose the tutorial fight, he evolves it into Vaporeon to make the game easier. If you win but skip the optional Route 22 battle, he gets Flareon. If you win both, he gets Jolteon. We want this to be as hard as possible, so let's do the optional battle. I named my Pikachu Travis. Our stats are about what you would expect for a starter, and we have Thundershock and Growl. Reliable, but not spectacular. Better starting moves than most starters, though. Right off the bat, we need to grind. Let me show you why. This is Brock's team in Pokemon Yellow. It's actually a little bit weaker than in Red and Blue, and for good reason. In Red and Blue, your starter can easily beat Brock. Even if you pick Charmander, Ember works well because his Pokemon have a bad special stat. In Yellow, though, we have electric moves, and that flat out doesn't work on his team. They added Mankey to Route 22 in yellow specifically so that you could get a fighting type early to beat Brock with, but we're not allowed to use that, so I'm just gonna have to level up a bunch. There's no TMs before Brock, so our only chance is to get to level 15 and spam double team, then hope we get enough quick attacks to win. That or get to level 20 and use Slam, although it's pretty inaccurate. Two force trips in and we're level 12, so I do the optional rival fight. It's completely one-sided though, although it was partially due to luck. Send Attack could have made that fight go either way if I was particularly unlucky. With that win though, our rival will have a Jolteon later. Not long later and we're level 15 and have double teams so I tried to fight Brock. I got my 6 double teams in and started spamming quick attack and although Geodude went down without too much trouble, Onyx is another story. He is just too tanky, and it doesn't help that he drags the battle out by using Bide, forcing me to not do damage to him for a few rounds so that he doesn't hit me back twice as hard. It was getting clear that I was going to run out of quick attacks before I take him out, so I restarted before the battle to go grind more. I try again at level 18. This time seems to be going much better as I seem to be doing 2 damage per quick attack to Onyx rather than just 1. In just under 4 minutes, I'm able to take out Brock's whole team. Considering it's only a few hours into the run, I really thought this would be a rougher start. The trainers on the way to Mount Moon were nothing, but in the cave itself we have an interesting Pokemon Yellow difference. Since it's based on the anime, we have to fight Jesse and James. They're really easy though, so they cause no issue. But on my way there, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Normally, we go for the rival fight first, but I decided to try Misty first. It ended up being a great decision because I absolutely mopped the floor with her team and got an extra level out of it to better prepare ourselves for the upcoming rival fight. Our rival opens with Spearow, but it goes down in one hit. Second is Sandshrew, and it could be dangerous, but we ended up critting him with a slam for a one-shot. Retita hits us with Hyper Fang thanks to me missing slam, so I go for a Thundershock and took him out quickly. Last is Eevee, so I paralyze him with Thunder Wave and start using Thunder Shocks, although his sand attack messes with our accuracy. It only takes a few hits to win the fight, though, so we're able to progress. While well, fighting my way through the trainers north of town, Travis hit level 26, so I replace Thunder Shock with Thunderbolt. It only has 15 power points, but it's a strong 95 power, 100 accuracy electric move, so I should be one-shotting a lot of the weaker trainers from now on. Before I even get to the SSN, I fight every last trainer that I can find east of town. Normally I wouldn't need this many levels so early, but this is probably going to be our first challenge where Giovanni is a real problem, so I need to be prepared. Revel time, but this ended up being a total one-shot sweep. 
Our sets might not be great, but Slam and Thunderbolt are strong enough to get away with easy knockouts on a handful of the first form Pokemon. The trash can puzzle in Lieutenant Surge's gym goes pretty well with us getting it on the second try. Surge himself only has one Raichu, but it's strong. I paralyze him right away as he growls to weaken our slams. We hit reasonably hard, but Slam is inaccurate and we miss a lot. It's Raichu misses Mega Punch, but nails a Mega Kick, almost taking us out, when we finally manage to land our third slam and finish him off. We need to go through Rock Tunnel to progress, but there's a mandatory ground trainer that we have to fight. I was petrified that I'd miss too many slams and run out of power points, but thanks to some incredible critical hit luck and one of the Geodudes self-destructing, it ended up being a lot easier than I expected. We have another Team Rocket fight, but it's a sweep as always, so I go around fighting every trainer that I can to prepare for Giovanni. Let's take a shot at him. If we fail, we can always try Erika or the rival fight first. Onyx is out first, so naturally I have to set up my six double teams. I'm lucky, and Onyx uses Rage first, a nearly useless move in Gen 1 because it locks you into doing nothing but more Rage until you faint. Thanks to how weak it is, I have all the time in the world to build double teams and land a few slams to finish him off. It's a shame that Slam is so inaccurate, I really can't rely on this for big fights without using double team. Second is Rhydon, but we have 19 levels on him and he's still first form, so two slams take him out. Last is Persian, so I can use Thunderbolt. It only takes two before an easy victory. I'm really not looking forward to when Giovanni gets stronger though. One dig or earthquake would probably take us out. Next is Erika, the Grass Gym Leader. Grass resists electric, so I go for Slam, but Tangela is tankier than I expected, so I paralyze her instead. A few Thunderbolts finish Tangela off as Weeping Bell comes out. I paralyze it too and start slamming, but Slam's terrible accuracy leads us to getting hit. Last is Gloom, and this is where Slam's inaccuracy really catches up. We miss three times in a row, then land our last two Slams to win the fight. I cannot rely on this move much longer. Pokemon Tower rival time, and for once the rival battle is the easiest of the big three fights in this area. It was a one-shot sweep for the whole team. We're getting to the point of the game where first form Pokemon are less popular though, so this is probably going to change fast. At the top of the tower are Jesse and James again, and this time it's not a one-shot sweep. Weezing survives with a sliver, poisons me, then faints just to be a jerk. Jesse and James are just in the game for the fun of it really, they're not a serious challenge. Poison Gym Leader Koga is next, and the levels are catching up fast. Venonat takes big damage from Thunderbolt, but instantly hits us with Toxic, a poison that doubles its damage every turn. Thankfully in Gen 1, we don't take damage on rounds where we get the knockout. The second Venonat hits Psychic to wear us down more. By the third Venonat, though, I can't handle it anymore. Between heavy damage from Poison and Double Edge, we just can't hang on and get taken out. I need a few more levels before I tackle this gym. I take a crack at the Sylphco rival fight instead, and I get almost instantly taken out by a super tanky Sand Slash. Okay, I was saying that our low stats would catch up with us soon, I didn't think it would be that soon. I decide to explore around the blindingly yellow Sylphco building, fighting every last trainer that I can to get a few more level ups. It takes a while, but I think we really needed it, at least to last long enough to build up some double teams if it comes to that. Five levels later and I try again. This time I managed to take down Sand Slash thanks to a lucky critical hit. Next is Nine Tails and I get Tail Whipped and hit with Quick Attack as it takes two Thunderbolts to end it. Cloyster gets one shot so Kadabra is out. He isn't too bad but his critical confusion brings us to low health. Kadabra has high base speed so it tends to crit a lot. Last is Jolteon, and I paralyze him for safety, but his double kick brings us to a sliver, we miss Slam twice and get finished off. Honestly, we only got that far because of a lucky crit on Sand Slash. I need to level just a little bit more. This time I level up on the route east of Fuchsia City since there's a lot of flying type trainers out that way. It took a while, so I had fun watching my friend Salt Factory and his three hour long video evaluating the story of every major Pokemon game from generations one through seven. Check it out, link in the description, card in top right. While I'm down there, I take another crack at Koga. The first two Venonats are one shot, so I'm doing a lot more damage now. The third one hangs on in red health and puts us to sleep, but hits us with two double edges doing big damage, but causing himself to faint. Last is Venomoth, who spends the whole fight building double teams, but I never miss, so I end up taking him out easily. It's crazy how much better a fight can go with a few more levels sometimes. Rival time, but this time Sand Slash Sand attacks me, so that sucks. I still crit the second slam and take him out though. Nontails uses Roar and Tail Whip, and his quick attack hardly hurts, so I take it out and level up. 
Callister gets an Aurora Beam in on us since I miss, but it also hardly hurts since its special stat is pretty low. Kadabra nails a Psy Beam and Confusion, but neither crit us, so we hang on and finish it. Last is Jolteon, so I paralyze it and get hit by another sand attack, making my already inaccurate slam even worse. I miss a few, but the one that hits was a critical hit, so we finally beat our rival. That was brutal. Team Rocket's on the next floor, but I totally one-shot sweep them again, then heal up for Giovanni. Nidorino and Persian are both easy one-shots with Thunderbolt, but Rhyhorn is tanky and I use double team while fighting him just in case. But he went down in a few slams. Last is Nidoqueen though, and as a part ground type, I have to use slam. For a move with 75 accuracy, I should be missing about 1 in 4 times, and yet I miss like crazy. I could have beaten this Nita Queen 4 times over if all my slams landed, but I lost due to abysmal luck. Second try and I mopped the floor with his team. You know, after missing about 1 million slams in the end, do you see why I hate this move? It's a last resort move on ground types. It says 75 accuracy, but it feels like 35. Next is the Psychic Gym. Abra goes down in one slam, obviously. Kadabra hangs on with a sliver, but just uses recover, so a second one takes him down. Alakazam hangs on, but Psywave is a move that does largely random damage, so it's pretty useless most of the time, so a second slam ends it. The Abra line could have hit hard, but they're made of paper mache. As long as you're faster and have a strong physical move, you'll be fine. The Fire Gym is much harder. Ninetales goes down easily in a few Thunderbolts without hitting us, and Rapidash is reasonably hard with takedown, but goes down in two hits. RK9, however, is one of the highest stats Pokemon in the game. One Thunderbolt hits hard as his takedown almost ends us. A second Thunderbolt paralyzes him, when he surely would have finished us off, giving us time for a third Thunderbolt for the victory. This battle took a solid 10 tries to win. The last gym leader is Giovanni, and look at his team. I obviously can't beat this right now. Four of his five Pokemon have Earthquake, a move that would almost for sure one-shot me. Doug Trio is a crit machine, and Rhydon has some of the best stats in the game. I have to grind more. I do the bulk of the grinding in the Seafoam Island, since the levels aren't too bad here, and everything here is weak to electricity. At a whopping level 71, I try Giovanni's Ground Gym. Dogtrio goes surprisingly well, as he tries for Fissure, a one-shot move, but it only works if he's faster than me, and he isn't. In Gen 1, Fissure is based on speed rather than level. One slam takes him out. We took big damage from Persian's Critical Slash, but two Thunderbolts ended it. Our next one, though, was Nita Queen, who easily finishes us with Earthquake. Alright, I'm gonna have to try and build up double teams on Dugtrio next time. Even with building up double teams, this is far from an easy fight. Earthquake is 100 accuracy move, so even at 6 double teams, it's not unreasonable to get hit by it, especially with how often Slam misses, giving them more chances to hit us. After about 20 failed attempts largely due to Slam missing, I get frustrated and go buy the TM for Mega Punch. It's literally the same move as Slam, but with 85 accuracy rather than 75. Even after learning Mega Punch and a few attempts, I get to his last Pokemon, and it's his mega powerful Rhydon who I can hardly hurt. He takes me out with no problem. I could learn Submission since it's a fighting move, but it does recoil damage and I doubt that I'll make it through the rest of his team using it. I decide to power level more. At level 75, I try again. It takes a solid 10 attempts, but eventually, I got a run where every Earthquake missed thanks to my double team. I'm not gonna act like this is some kind of massive strategic victory, this was just grinding out attempts until the luck lined up. Finally though, we can go on with the run as normal. Second from last rival fight time, Sand Slash is a problem like usual, doing quite a bit of damage to us before we can land our two mega punches to take it down. Second is Execute and we get Leech Seeded, so any round where we don't get a knockout, we're gonna lose health. Execute goes down, nine tails quick attacks us, but can't handle a single Thunderbolt. Cloyster is one shot, as is Kadabra thanks to a critical hit, so it's onto Jolteon. I Mega Punch first to see how much it does, and it brings it to low health, as he uses agility for some reason. He nails five pin missiles for passable damage, but my Thunderbolt finishes him. Next is the Elite Four, but we need to prepare. I go to the Celdon department store and buy TM17. It's Submission, the only regular damaging fighting move that Pikachu can learn. It's 80 power and 80 accuracy, so slightly less accurate than Mega Punch, and it does recoil damage to us, but at least it's super effective against rock types, so we'll definitely need this for Bruno. I also grind a little bit more to try and get to level 80. Here's our stats. It's not horrible, but for sure it's lower than most of what we're going to be fighting. 
Still, our moves are pretty decent and Thunderbolt hits hard. Make your final guesses on if I can win or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. Almost all of our team is water type, so we take her out like it's nothing. Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. He opens with rock type Onyx, so this is exactly why I learned Submission. I ended up one-shotting him, so that was nice. Both Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee got one-shotted by Thunderbolt, so it's back out to Onyx. This time Submission didn't take him out, but Bruno used an X defense, so my second Submission did the deal. Finally, it's Machamp time, and he does survive Thunderbolt and locks me in his own Submission, but we hang on and end him. Why does Submission do recoil damage, by the way? It's not a DDT, you're not landing on the ground. Isn't the appeal of Submission Wrestling that you don't wreck your own body while doing it? Anyway, I heal up between fights and move on. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. Thanks to some amazing crits, she is actually a complete one-shot sweep. Even Lorelei wasn't a one-shot sweep, so I'm pretty happy about this. Agatha has scary Pokémon, but she kind of fights like an idiot, so it can be hit and miss. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. Gyarados goes down to one Thunderbolt, as you'd expect, but Dragonair is out. Dragons resist electricity, but I give a Thunderbolt anyway and do half its health and damage. He misses Slam, so a second one ends it. Another Dragonair is out, so I try for submission this time and hit way harder than I expected. Bubble Beam hurts a little, but I slap on the Gulak and finish it. Aerodactyl goes down to one Thunderbolt and his Dragonite is out last. I paralyze it with Thunder Wave, he fails to act, and I Thunderbolt him twice for an incredibly easy win. I use a Max Aether to top off my Thunderbolts, heal up, and move on to the final fight. Last is our rival, the Pokemon Champion. He starts with Sand Slash, and I did this fight 30 times before I gave up. He has Earthquake. I literally can't win right now without insane luck or more levels, so I decide to go level up more. Grinding really isn't too bad at this part of the game, though, since I can easily beat the first two Elite Four members, so I can just fight them over and over to get tons of easy experience. Even at level 92 with a critical submission, though, I can't get past Sand Slash, so I decide to just spend a little while maxing out my level. I really thought that I'd be able to do this before hitting level 100, but this Sand Slash is a meat grinder. Finally, at level 100, I land a lucky critical hit to one-shot Sand Slash. This is my fifth try at level 100. Without this crit, I can't take him down. Next was Alakazam, so I tried Submission, but he used Recover. My following Thunderbolt took him out better than I thought it would, considering he has a high special stat. Next is Executor, so I tried Submission, but it did very little, as he did his Stomp. Thunderbolt did a little bit more, but he just kept using weak moves like Barrage, so one last Thunderbolt did it. Fourth is Cloyster, so it's a Thunderbolt for a one-shot. Same with his Ninetales that he sent out after, who only hit us with a quick attack, so we're onto his Jolteon. I got lucky and got a critical hit with Submission, tapping him out and winning the final battle to become the new Pokemon Champion. That was actually much harder than I expected. That Sand Slash and some of those Giovanni fights seriously slowed down the run by a lot, but overall it was pretty fun. December is coming up though, and I want all four Saturdays of December to be massive. That means next Saturday, I'm gonna try for another No Poke Center run, this time in Pokemon Fire Red. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. If you want to see more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. Also, check out the playlist in the description if you want to watch more Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you want to see more Pokemon stuff from me, my friend Whatageek and I just finished a black and white randomizer over on his channel, and we're soon moving on to a Gen 1 randomizer. Also, come to my Twitch TV streams and let me know that this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.